Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Bookmap Advanced Education, the Pro Trader webinar series all week long. Uh, we've had some uh, some nice presentations here. Uh, today we have Scott Pulsini, futures trader. You may have heard of him. Uh, and uh, this is uh, similar to yesterday's with JTrader. Um, you guys are getting free access to what our advanced education is like, That we and we do this every week. So, uh, you know, Scott presents every Thursday. He goes for about an hour, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern to about 11. He usually goes to about 11.30, uh, to be honest. And um, he's going to go through, read the order flow, the way that he trades uh, and uses Bookmap. And he, you'll find out more about that and, and his, his um, uh, how he accesses stops and icebergs, et cetera. Uh, and, um, uh, and the way he manages his trades and everything. So uh, this is um, insight to what... Uh, we do every week and uh, that's the pro trader webinar for today so he uh, he also takes live positions it is in demo and i'll talk about that in just a second uh and if you guys don't know who scott is i'll just go over it quickly here scott has been trading for over 20 years during the years of 2002 to 2005 scott was responsible for trading about 10 percent of the s p e mini futures volume volume uh, scott now focuses on trading both equities and futures he's an expert scalper and has an innate ability to quickly read the order flow and volume within price patterns uh, which is perfect for book map uh, scott's uh, also a mentor uh, an educator. He has a trading room. Um, and uh, go to his website here. He, you've got his email. You've got his Twitter feed, trading room. He's got an educational course that's on our Bookmap Marketplace, and you can get special deals from Scott's link here. I will paste all of these into the into the GoTo webinar chat so you guys don't have to copy them down. Um, now I need to go through the disclosures, and then we'll turn it right over to Scott. General disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation, demo, paper trading mode, and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. All right, so know what you're getting involved in here. Uh, I, I need to mention this, uh, especially since this is open to all today and free, uh, so you guys get a taste of what uh, we do here in the Bookmap uh, education. Um, and uh, that is, it's demo, and it's not for shadowing. It, it would be just uh, foolish uh, to do something like that. It is about learning how he reads the order flow. It's part of the Bookmap education. You have an educational course, and you have a daily advanced webinars every weekday. Uh, from 10 a.m. to about 11, and you know we—it's all forward-looking analysis. Plus, you have the live trading like today. All right. So, risk disclosure: trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And with that, let's just turn it right over to Scott and let him take it away. I appreciate hear me. Yes. <clears throat> All right. A little crazy right now. I'm trying to follow multiple things here. Um, obviously, a head ripping off rally. Um, What's funny about this rally is I was long overnight <clears throat> in my room. We talked about this trade and in my fatigue. So you can see that traders that have been trading 20 plus years make mistakes as well, like stupid, ridiculous mistakes. So I, before I went, to, so I was long from 85, 42, 85, just, just a couple because <clears throat> my night trading sucks because I can't obviously monitor, but I had my, we talked about this liquidity level here. Uh, you can't really see it now, but you can see it right here. Um, it was in there all day yesterday, and I said that was my target. And before I went to sleep, I put an order in, what I thought was a sell order. Instead, I bought more at this price and then woke up and came down here. It came, the market was down here, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. So the point is it started to sell off, and I just scratched the whole thing, but I cost myself huge money with an error. Um, and I wanted to be long this, I was long this market, and I bought more at the 
pretty much the high and then it sold off when I got out and then we just ripped back all the way. So pretty painful start to the morning um, on a you know self-induced error, but you know, you can see how it happens to the best of us and you have to, you know, you just gotta be paying attention when you do stuff or it can cost you dearly and that one cost me dearly. So so anyway, here we are. Um, these are very important areas for crude, um, equities, ES, NQ, and gold as well. So you can see here, there's ES. This is a straight beeline move. We were talking about why I wanted to be long here yesterday at the close, structure-wise and that liquidity. Um, <clears throat> we get broken out of this balance. We built more balance on top of balance, and then we you know, we're right near when I got long yesterday and was shooting for that liquidity there. So now we've had a straight V-line move right into a very important area. You can see this zone that I drew here. So that what's this zone? This zone is the bottom of this balance area that we broke down from. This is a very, very important area, right? So, you know, when markets retest important areas, they tend to fail, at least temporarily, especially when they do straight line moves into those areas so you can see we even had a little balance below the balance um, and then this is where this whole directional conviction area started so this is really telling what happens here as far as the structure if we get through here the next stop is probably going to be right around here this 4460 area that's the high volume note of this so again markets are this is inter intermediate bearish short-term bullish right so the short term i showed you bullish but intermediate this is still bearish because we broke down from this bigger one and this one here right and all we're really doing is returning to this right now so this is a place where this market could pause and it's still again intermediate term bearish until we can overtake the high volume node of the balance area <clears throat> that with the bigger balance area and a multi-week balance area um that we broke down from Right, so markets can come all the way back, retest and do that. They can even retest the high volume note and do that. So until we can get through this, um, I still will consider shorts, especially now that we've gotten, I didn't want to, I wanted to be long here and especially, I really wanted to be long here, but I didn't do anything because I was, again, put in the wrong order. But now that we're far enough away from the structure, you're not standing in front of a, of a puke, right? That's what you have to be careful of when you want to, if you want to short, you don't want to be shorting here because all the traders that are short here have to get out. And that's how you have to think about it anyway. But now we're so far from this structure and this structure, and we're back into important area we broke down from, I would potentially take a short here. It feels not good to even think about that right now, but, um, I just have seen this too many times where you get straight beeline moves into important areas and then it then it turns around and not that we're gonna do this, but we could definitely pull back, um, especially to you know VWAP area, right, before resuming upward. So I the point is I will take a short here. It, again, it feels like I'm standing in front of a freight train. And most of the times those are the, the best trades. The ones that feel the worst are the best trades. So <clears throat> that's why I try my best to trade what I see and not what I feel. So, um, you know, so those of you been on my webinars in the past, I, I use structure, both, you know, the candlesticks structure stuff I just showed you, balance areas, market profile, and then I use the real-time volume to confirm my areas and the setups that I use, the five distinct setups, to enter my trades, right? So quickly before we uh, go forward, you can see here on the market profile, this is a very important area here too. The, you know, market profile is structure, but in it just it's showing you in a different way. So this was a composite value area that we had broken um, down from. Ice for alert. So 501. So we've moved all the way back. These are the last few days. So two days ago, we were, I was short on this. We failed to get in one time, failed to get on another time. Um, Actually, I did not go short this. I take that back. I, but I made a playbook off of this that we're, I'm sharing with my room. But anyway, this was a good sign at the time for a short. Tried to get in this market profile composite, failed, tried again, failed, got below VWAP, sold off, closed here. Then yesterday, Fed met, Fed meeting yesterday, interest rates. We attempted to get out, pulled back to the inside, attempted to get out, get out, and then basically closed here. And then overnight, you can see we just launched right through here, right through this guy, 
and now we're here. So this is a very, very important area where we could pause and pull back. Like I said, and here's that area that I just showed you on the bar chart, right? So if we, you know, accept in here and I start getting some bullish signals, I will take a long or there's that 4460 area to the other side of this. The tendency for markets when they get in composite profiles is to go to the other side. But I will also take a short here if this fails because again we've had a straight beeline move. I'd rather I've just seen this too many times again the straight move into an important area where it will fail at least temporarily. So well, I'd rather take a short here even though it feels like you know like I said not so good. Um, but you know if this doesn't mean this market can't do that right. So if I I'm using my volume signals to confirm which way I want to trade here. But this is one of those times. Again, I come up every day in my room, we go over the markets, I come up with a thesis on what I'm seeing from my experience and what I think is gonna happen, and then I try to trade in that direction, obviously, right? But there's certain times where, in areas where you can trade either way, and this is one of them right here. I could go long if the setup occurs, or I can go short. Um, so then real-time volume, <clears throat> let's see here we had a series of uh, buy icebergs. They weren't huge, but they were still threshold. This one was 713. That's this area here. Where did I, where did it go? Here it is. So that was this. And I think we just got a stop run. So the stop run was inside this ice and that wasn't even threshold. My, I mean, it was close, it was 500, but the stop road failed as well. So this is this zone is important. And then we came back and you can see more buy ice. Here's another thousand, same same area. I can actually lower this a little bit to incorporate that, which I'm gonna do right down here. Actually deleted the wrong side of that. Hold on a second here. the one I wanted to change. All right, so there's your iceberg zone, a couple thousand in that zone. So the way I determine what's up, so I have five distinct setups. So I have Titanic, a Titanic setup when, you know, the market runs into buy ice or an iceberg and holds and continues that way. That's a Titanic or I've broken ice. Um, so this was a Titanic setup. As long as you can get an ATR above the area, then that determines what setup it is for me. So the ATR right now is, you can see 5.56 points. So I'm pretty sure this has gone five this points above. December, it I has. So now what I'll do is, you know, barring something else coming in, which it looks like it is right now, let's see. Yeah, so you had combined a thousand, close to a thousand stop runs here. Then you have, this is probably, just trying to see this. This is another thousand ice. So this, this could be a stopping point right here, right? So let's mark this up. Let's see what, so this is what we call a double whammy, right? So you have the buy stop run. So usually stop runs are the retail trader into, Actually, this is a this is not a double whammy. Take that back. You have buy stops and buy ice. So this is not a very common, a very common setup. Let me get this marked and then okay. So what I want to do here is I'm not really interested in shorting this up here because of what just happened down here, right? But if we if this fails and gets below this this prior ice here, then I'll look for shorts and I'll look for a move down to that 16 area. Because the problem is you could short this, but you have this set up here that held, right? You had this buy ice, again, this was 2000 buy ice here that obviously have, are winning, right? We've moved nine points away from there. Yes, this could turn into a bearish setup um, where this breaks, but you guys still got to, it still has to get through this area that, you know, whoever sold in this area into the paper, that's, that's what the iceberg is. It's, it's basically hidden orders that were buying when, pa when paper was aggressively selling. When this comes back, that those sellers want to get out, right? So you may see, you know, uh, a bounce off this area. So that's why I don't want to short right here, just because it's so close to this zone. But if we get below this zone, 
then I'll reconsider. If we get above this zone, I'm going to go long, right? Because of everything we just talked about, how this is a really important area. So we're trying to accept into this into this market profile composite. You see the real-time volume. If it can get above that ice zone that I just drew, then I'm going to go long and I'm going to look for 44.60 as my first target. If the, these two zones fail, then I will take a short. So you know, if you want to be really aggressive, you could short on the break of this, right, this zone here. But I, again, this is just too close. I want to see us get below there. This market's just going crazy. And you can see these the underlying stocks that comprise the index, the, the majority, the high percentage of the index, like these these five or six or seven stocks, the Fang T, or whatever they call it, um, is that comprises like 20, 25% of the index, right? And this, you want to keep an eye on these. This is this is a software called Tick Strike. Um, I've used it for a lot of years. They're, they finally updated their software, um, but there's other things in the work that I'll be showing you guys here in the next few weeks or talking about that there's an alternative to this. So it's a little surprise. So we'll cover that at the time. But for right now, I'm using these and it's just helping me gauge the strength of the market you know, in my in my areas as well. So you can see they just keep buying these. So this goes from a one to a 15 level. So 15 is max. So that means they're basically buying these stocks max, right? So that just helps me as well. Like you guys have seen in my prior webinars, whether what I usually, the conservative entry in this zone, right? So if I wanted to get long here, if this breaks the zone, is to wait for an ATR move above, which we just said was right around six points, five and a half points, a retest, then fail, and then you get in a half ATR and then you take the trade. There's times I'll be aggressive right out of the zone. If all these stocks are firing off, I will be aggressive, right? So I'll make that determination. If this starts to move back up here, a half ATR, so say three points, which is three points above this, then and these are all firing off, I will hop in immediately. So we'll we'll get to that if that happens. Oh, that's confusing. I know there's some newer people on here. You know, a lot of the things I'm talking about are pretty advanced where you'd have to be on prior webinars to understand I don't have time. So, Obviously, if I'm live trading, you go back and talk about the elementary stuff, but um, you'll, you'll be able to follow here if I put this trade on. So this is undetermined right now. We're still in this zone. I want to see, see us break above here and I'll go long, or if we get below these two zones, then I will take a short. <clears throat> so that's a yes. Any questions on that, Bruce, before I move over to Um I had a question, but then uh, Omar, um... Uh, also was asking about when you're talking about pullback to VWAP, are you talking about the 24-hour VWAP or the regular trading hour VWAP? 24-hour uh, I use in the, um, <clears throat> so I put that on my five-minute chart. So I use the 24-hour. This is just standard thinkorswim VWAP, um, whatever their default settings are here. I'll show you. Shows the deviations, the two standard deviations from VWAP. Um, it's, it's a day. That's about it. But yeah, it's 24 hour. Okay. Uh, I, I was wondering about like um, looking at your volume profile. I, well, um, for for anyone who's new in here, um, I mean, you can see what Scott's doing. He's looking and he has a strategy that uh, he studied on the higher time frame, uh, and then uh, then looking at the order flow. Uh, and book wrap and really drilling into the order types within the order flow, uh, the stops and icebergs that uh, is viewable with market by order data um, and uh, and indicators from from book map that you, we'll, we can talk about later. But um, so are you looking for um, what about the point of control? You're looking at the um, value area low and high uh, from those previous um, uh, profile areas. Uh, what about the point of control though as well? Yeah, I will watch that as well. Um, you know, it's not as, as important to me as the, the tops and bottoms in these areas, but yeah, and I'm going to show you an example of um, that here in another market. But yeah, we're real close to the point of control here too. So, you know, <clears throat> I don't like just the biggest thing for me is if we accept in here, I don't, I'm not. I'm not looking to short the point of control. Yeah, we could bounce off here, but I want to see us get back out of here if I want to short. I'm not, I don't like when market again, when markets accept in the market profile composites, the tendency is to get to the other side. So I, I don't want to just short here and hope it comes back and moves back out of here, right? The tendency is to get to the other side. So 
I'll pay attention, especially if it rejects it. That just gives me more confidence that this will fail if it gets back outside of this guy, right? Okay. But I, I don't, you know, um, I don't really fade markets at the point of control, put it that way. Okay. All right. And I, I didn't know if you wanted to uh, show your uh, uh, webcam or mission control. Yeah, I forgot about that mission control. Hold on a second here. You got me. Oh yeah. yeah there it is. It's NASA. <laughs> um, oh, so I was going to show you. Let's see. There's another market that I think it was gold. I want to say. Yeah. Well, this was at the time it was looking like it was going to bounce off this point of control and this move down. But this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about, right? So you're, if you're like, hey, yeah, here we go, a straight move into the point of control, I want to get long. Well, what did it do once it accepted inside this composite? We went right to the other side, right? So that's yeah. why I don't like playing fades at point of controls. I'll pay attention. So again, if that would have bounced that point of control and got back out of this area, then I would then that would have been go time for a potential long, right? But I don't just blindly buy point of control, and you can see why. This thing accepted in here, and it went exactly pretty much to the tick to the other side of this this prior composite. So now whatever way this breaks out of this is gonna be the next big move in my opinion. We're either gonna retrace this entire thing, we'll go over gold and the structure stuff, but we're either gonna retrace it or we're gonna move down to the next big one here. And there was another one here that it could pause at from prior. Um, let's see what that is. So that one's from August. This one was from early August. This mid August. These two composites. So that's those are the next stops down. And obviously, the, this one's not too far away. But if we get through these, and then we're coming down here. Um, well, I mean, while I'm on this market, might as well look at it. We talked about this in the room yesterday. How this was looking after the Fed. This was looking bearish once again. Um, yeah, this balance that built. We the Fed came out. It, tried to break out of this not only was that a failed breakout and got through the high buying node it was a massive selling tail which is this a signal in itself right that's instant rejection and then that was also a failed breakout of this guy so i told the room yesterday i was looking short even though i haven't done it i was short and then the pmi came out and I basically scratched it um that was way down here but Structure wise, this was telling you something was up that this thing did that. We had a fail break out of that. And you can see overnight what happened here. This is the tendency. This happens in all markets all the time. Here's the high volume node. NQ stops December stopped by NQ 162 contracts. I'll come back to that in a second. I don't want to miss the live trades showing stuff that it's already passed. Let's see what we're doing here. All right, so this was ice right before I got on here. I drew this. You can see these zones here. Actually, this was humongous ice. This, this, I should have been all over this. I forgot. So we're just breaking out of the zone now, but I will go along this. You can see 605 buy icebergs in NASDAQ, which is a lot. That's this zone here, right? And we just basically have been bouncing around. So I was looking for an ATR about break out of here, retest, fail, right? So ATR right now is 20, 20.76, so 21, 20, not ticks, points. Right, so we still haven't technically got a ATR an ATR out of here, right? So that means I need to see 21 points above this zone to confirm this is a iceberg uh, Titanic setup, right? So that was the top of the zone is 25, so I need to see 46, right? Then you, this is the conservative entry, right? You could go long um, aggressively, but first and foremost, so the conservative entry is wait for an ATR to confirm this is a Titanic setup, wait for the pullback. Then when it moves, when it retests fails, half ATR, you can get in and your stop goes a full ATR um, plus a few points to get out of that range below here, right? So again, we still haven't gotten below here. I mean, um, a full ATR above here. So that we still don't really know what this is officially. <clears throat> I mean, if this comes back above here and these are all firing off, remember I was talking about an aggressive entry, I will go along this, this based on this huge iceberg that's holding right now. <clears throat> So half ATR, when I say we are 20, 
21 points. So we're looking at 10 and a half points above here. So I'm actually glad I missed this because I probably would have hopped in and you guys, basically every webinar I've been on, I've been aggressive every time it's done that. So I'm glad I missed that trade because I would have been right around 35 and a half. But if this comes back again and these are firing off, I will go along at a half ATR above here. This is the aggressive entry, right? Or you can wait for a full ATR, retest, fail, and then get it. Those are the best entries. But the problem is you might miss a trade, right? Because the, I, what I talk about all the time is about 80% of the time, the market will retest this area after moving the full ATR away. But 20% of the time, it just does that. And then you're sitting here beside yourself that you didn't get on the trade. So what I'll probably do is just do a half position once if it comes back up here and these stocks, that's the aggressive entry. And these stocks are firing off, so I'll watch that. Let's check. Yes, what's going on here? And then I'll cover gold a little bit more. So yes, it's still in the zone. So let's take a quick look at uh, structure in Nasdaq again. Really important area. Same look, right? So you can see this was multi-week. Yeah, that's about a week, Friday to Friday, balance. So we broke down from this guy. We built balance below balance, broke down from then, then built low balance, broke down hard, gap down from this exact area, right around this balance area. And now, again, short term, we were bullish, balance, breakout, balance, breakout, but now we're far enough away from this. Now we're coming into an area where this could do this, or if this gets a little higher, like if this bounce, if I get my signal, this is what I, this is exactly what I look for, right? So now we're getting that iceberg right here. So this is telling me if this holds, we're coming to the high volume node of this. And that's right around 15.4, a little higher. So that's almost 100 points higher that this trade could produce, right? So again, I look at my structure, I come up with my thesis. So we are basically through this zone and I see that ice. So I will go long. If this fails here and I start to, if that ice breaks, then I'll go short and at least watch it move back into here. So again, this is another market right now where I can trade either way. It doesn't happen that often, but this is what they call an inflection point. It's can either do that or do that. And I'm going to base it on the real time volume, which is the most important thing you can be looking at and how it reacts. Right? So based on this huge ice iceberg, Whatever way this breaks is basically the way I'm going to trade this thing. Another thing you want to pay attention to is exactly what we saw yesterday. Um, where's all the liquidity? Right here. Where do you think we're going? Right here. That this just we talk about it. I've been talking about this for two years on these bookmap webinars, whether it be stocks, futures. This is the big money. The big money gets their way. It doesn't mean it's going to just straight beeline right into this right now, but trust me, we will get up into this. And that's exactly what we saw yesterday when I got long the ES trade that I somehow screwed up overnight. That's exactly what we saw was that liquidity was in there the entire day yesterday going into the Fed. That's another thing I stressed in my room. Yeah, so this, this shows right here, right? So this is these two bands of liquidity. These were in here, and this is going back to last night, right? These were in here before the Fed, into the Fed, after the Fed. So when that liquidity sits in there like that, that means they want to get filled, right? They're not afraid. Of, what if the Fed would have been the most, you know, bullish thing ever, and it just would have ripped right through there? Whether well, they want that, that, that shows you they want to get filled, right? They didn't pull that liquidity before the number, meaning the, it's a very, very high likelihood we're going to get up to here. Why? Because they'll find a way, because they're the big money, they're the big players, and it gets, as it gets closer, inches up closer. They'll push it into their liquidity to get their fills. And you can see when I put my backward order in here like a complete tired moron when I should have been selling there. That's what we took out the first time. We moved down. And then we came on and took out the other liquidity. Now, this is where you want to be careful, right? You look at this and you're like, well, what does this mean? There's a lot of liquidity. I don't pay attention to liquidity that just pops in the order book now, right? That's just algos most of the time, right? I, or it's guys trying to spoof the market, so on and so forth. Like this liquidity I'll pay attention to because this has been in here since before the open, right? I'll pay attention to that liquidity. This liquidity you can see is just elbows. I'm not interested in it. See how polls puts it in, polls? Like this is just games. These are not games. And this, the tendency for this market to go 
these markets to go to liquidity is extremely high. So, you know, in the morning when you're coming up with your thesis and you're looking at your charts and you're like, okay, this is bullish. You know, this is when we're way down here, right? We gapped up overnight and we were here and you're like, okay, this pull back. I know we're pulling back to the to the top of this balance area. And I know there's big liquidity up there. I want to be long, right? That just helps you with your thesis. And it also helps that we pretty much always go there. So you can see there's liquidity up here. So I'm, you know, I said I will get short if we break this area. I will, but it doesn't mean we're not going to make it up to her eventually. You know, see what I'm saying? So I'm basically going against the grain because I have a feeling. I don't even think I'm going to have to worry about it because I don't think we're going to get below here. I think we're going to break out of this and I'll go long. But I will take the short as well because it doesn't mean we're going to get there right this second, right? I know that sounds a little contradicting, but, you know, I will take a temporary short. And if I short this, it's not, I don't, I don't think we're going to pull back 100 points. I think we can pull back, you know, 15 points and then resume upwards. And then once that happens, if I get another long signal, I keep this in mind. So the point is keep the liquidity in mind when you're doing your your, your overall thesis. You know, trust me, you'll be on the right side of the market. As you can see here, look at this. You see anything below here? Nothing. Black. There's liquidity above here. So the odds are we're going up there. And it looks exactly the same in NASDAQ, right? See that? Black. Liquidity. Where do you think we're going? Wherever paper wants us to go. Paper meaning, the, you know, the big money. The house is the big fund. Other things that I look at, um, I haven't looked at them a ton lately here because I took these off my chart to help my book map flow easier. These are the, the ETFs. A lot of times you can get some uh, good views of where liquidity is on these. Sometimes it, it's very straightforward. Sometimes it's, it's confusing. This is not straightforward to me. So you can see here, little liquidity here. There's much higher liquidity here. What does that mean? Who knows, right? I mean, this this is not clear to me, so you can't really trade off it. What's probably going to happen is we'll probably fill all of these, and then it'll come down and fill all those, and I'll have the ultimate, you know, 40 point scalp. <clears throat> so that's not helpful. That's QQQ spies. Let's see if that looks any different. So I'm not really seeing anything in here. Well, there's a little bit above, right? And then. This is pretty funny to watch too, right? Like you can tell this is one house. Look, look at this, how this like blocks off, right? Disappears higher. <laughs> so it's like, you know, this is the same person, big player, big house, big fun, whatever. You can just see it, like it cut off there and then they moved it up here. So whether they get to fill or not, who knows, but you can see there's liquidity up here too. So I'll just, I'll glance at this to take it, you know, get an overall, because there's going to be some days where you'll just see nothing, kind of like you see now in the futures, nothing down here, and you'll just see bands of liquidity. And you know, that's where we're headed. You try to find your best point to get long based on your real-time volume signals. <coughs> Any questions on that, Bruce? Uh, nope. All right, so these are basically just sitting in limbo. Remember, I will get long this half ATR above here if these stocks are firing off. Again, ATR is now it's down to 20, 19.93. So 10 points above this zone, I will enter a long. If these are firing off, if not, I'm going to wait for a move away, retest, fail, and then I'll go long. Other stuff we look at. Talked about this many times in this webinar. These are, this is called Algo Guy. We call it in my room Algo Guy. All this is an exponential moving average. The blue are the is the shorter term moving averages. The red are the longer term. A lot of guys trade this. There's there's different ways to trade this thing. Like when it crosses, you can see and it this thing crossed. So it was just a trend up. Um, other way guys trade again. I learned this from one guy that I mentored. I, I do not. I do not add things into my trading very lightly, right? The, the less you can have on your charts, the better. I, oh, that's all I ever do is preach that. Um, so you're not getting contradicting signals. I mean, there's guys, you know, that have 55 things on their chart. And again, I, there was a guy in the room the other day. He's actually, he actually showed me some cool things, but, and he, he's 
you know, he obviously has the bandwidth to look at a lot of stuff, but it's still not good. He, we did a playbook session, so we did that in my room because that's the most important thing you can do in trading is come up with playbooks, distinct setups that you look for and you wait for like a sniper. And when you see him, that's when you trade. You don't just trade to try to catch moves, right? So anyway, he presented and a lot of stuff he, he talked about was valid. Like I like some some stuff that I had never even heard of, like for instance, not, I've never heard of, but I didn't know you can do it. Like, if I think or swim, I didn't know you can do this and trade now how long. I didn't know you can have like a synthetic product here where you can add, you can see this is Microsoft plus Amazon plus Facebook. So basically the FANG stocks. I didn't put Tesla in here, but so this is like a synthetic view of all of those stocks combined. I didn't know you can do that, right? So that, that's one of the great things about a trade room is guys collaborate and you get you come up with different ideas but i'm very wary to add anything to my charts without watching it for months and months and months so back to this a guy that i mentored showed me this is how he used to trade and this is exactly the trade he would take he would wait for a pullback into the longer term moving average and as soon as it got back above the blue that's the trade he would take right so that's another way you can trade this um you know but the way i use this i don't trade this in a vacuum i don't trade anything in a vacuum but I will pay attention. Hey, is the you know is this bullish or is this bearish? Is this crossing? You know, then you got to be careful. Things like that. So that's I keep an eye on that. Um, and then I mean that's basically all I use. And then again, I know Bruce doesn't like the uh, doesn't love the footprint, but I you know I use this for years and years and years. And I was at best an average trader. This is before Bookmap. I just think this kind of gives you an idea. You can see the relative volume coming in and. You can see, hey, are the sellers offside or the buyers offside? So I started using this again recently. Again, I used it for years, and I was now I was I had to get out of the business. You know, I got back in the business when Bookmap came around. Let's put it that way. So that's why this is not an end-all, be-all at all, at all. You can go down a rabbit hole with this stuff, but it's I like to look at it just to see the relative volume and you know what what the aggressors are doing. And there is a way to look at this on Bookmap as well, but I look at Bookmap. I have so much stuff on Bookmap as, as it is. I just like to glance at this, right? So you can see here as this came up, sellers, 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 some buying, sellers, you know, so they, you know, these sellers were wrong. This is not a small move. Let me get the prices here. I have it condensed so you can see here, they've been selling this thing since basically 4410. How did that work out for them? Not good. Right, so it's like they sell it, they got to puke it, sell it to puke it, sold more. You can see this is almost the exact same delta, right? So the delta is the aggressor. So they were there was more aggressive hitting in the bid than obviously buying, and then they were wrong, and then turn around, almost the exact same delta going up, right? So it just it just helps you, but you can go down a bad rabbit hole with this stuff, right? But I like to keep an eye on it with my book map stuff. Um, book map is number one, obviously. That's why I'm on the webinar. All right, so we're still in this uh, ice zone. So, you know, the, what I'm showing you guys is ways I trade it by using this thing for almost two years, right? You can say, you know what, this zone is important. This market's very bearish. Hey, we're pulling back to the red algo guy, whatever you're looking at. This is, remember, this is the most important, the zone. But you say, hey, I want to get long right here, right? I don't want to do that in this situation because this is a inflection point. Like I said, this could be a... Um, this can stop right here and turn around and, and pull back to this stuff. So that's why I don't want to do that. But you can come up with your own variations of, I mean, the zones are the zones. The volume is the volume, but you can say, hey, you know what, Scott? I don't like Scott's method of waiting for move, ATR, retest, fail. I want to wait for the bottom of the zone and I want to give it a shot and just risk maybe an ATR below the zone. And I that means I don't have, because guess what? If I, if I get in here, wait for this, and I get in up here, I got to risk, you know, 30 plus points. If you're getting in right here, you may only have to risk five points. And if this holds, which it does all the time, you know, now you're risking five points to make, it's going to go 30 just before it even gets into where I would enter, right? So you could come up with variations of the zone. The zones are the zones. And there's no, there's no, like, there's no, if, those are black and white, right? It's black and white that this was 500 buy ice right here, right? That's black and white. But how you play these zones, you can come up with your own variations. I just, from my experience, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's dangerous to be buying at the bottom of this because this could just do this, but you don't have to risk much and you could be, you know, it could hold and you can, you can rip away. So, you know, there, there's, there's different variations of playing the zones, put it that way, but these are the way I play them or just from my experience of watching it for almost two years now. So just know that you can have variations to those. 
Um, just a whole lot of nothing going on right here as we digest this area. So, you know, the longer we sit here, the more likely we are going to probably break higher. All we're doing is, you know, this is trending markets have the tendency to do, not the tendency, they do do, you know, directional conviction, balance, directional conviction, balance. So, so what other things can we look at to figure out if this is a trend day? Well, you want to look at ADD, advanced decline line. This is, again, standard. You want to see this. Usually, if we're going to be trending, this will be over 2,000. All this is is stocks advancing versus stocks declining, right? Trend day is when you get above there and it holds and then does this. This is still bullish, right? We're plus 1,600, but, you know, this is starting to pull back a little bit. So it's not really trend day material yet. It could get there. Um, and here's your little this thing that I just found out about or learned about, which is kind of cool. I didn't know this. And I think Bookmap is in the, in the works of coming up with some synthetic stuff. You haven't released that yet, have you, Bruce, where you can overlay all these different products? Or have you? I'm sorry. Um, I don't understand. You know, kind of like you're doing with the Bitcoin. You guys sent out an email the other day where you can overlay all the different exchanges so you can see liquidity. I thought, I thought you guys were talking about you're coming up with a functionality where you can have a synthetic product, right? So he asked. Yeah, with you could do that now in, in futures. That's it's been out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll show it to you. Um, okay. So I mean, uh, basically, it's, it's it's called multi-book. You guys may have heard about it. Uh, let me just give a quick overview, so it just answers questions up front here. Um, if you want to look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin is obviously from multiple exchanges. Each one has their own price. Um, so and and own liquidity uh so uh you know it varies greatly uh so if you're looking at in binance for example that's a pretty big one um but you want to add in others you can look at one bitcoin symbol but uh it all is consolidated on the in one chart from five different exchanges the way it will work in futures uh yeah i mean you can add different um uh whatever symbol you want to it in futures but you know, you're going to have kind of weird pricing in there. So it's better to maybe do calendar spreads on rollover, for example. Uh, if you want to look at like, uh, you know, the ES um, uh, December contract versus the, you know, the the March contract or something like that. Or crude, you know, one month versus the next, you know, November versus December. Right. All right. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll, I'll show you it. Okay, cool. All right, so again, like I said, this is a really important area and these markets are still intermediate term bearish. So this is an area where this could fail. And this is why I said I can go either way. Once again, this is where this whole move started and this is where we got to, right? So this could fail. If this ice fails, I will go short and I will watch a move back to either the top of this or the high volume. You know, depending, it could go right through here, but these are two areas that can stop, right? It's the same stuff all day long. So this is, you know, this is 80 points away, 15 to 20 area just to get back to the top of this. I think that could pull back there. Doesn't mean we can't do this, this, and then this, and then go hit that liquidity I was showing you, right? But this is an area where you, this is why these zones are drawn, right? So, and you can see like, once you learn how to draw these zones, and I. In the middle of making a course, it's going to come out one of these days. I just had a lot going on, but you can see how it will it'll correspond with prior areas, right? So you can see this was an area where we launched directional conviction, and then I could have made this a little bigger, but you had support, 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 and then this is actually the bottom of this, and then you had a balance here, and then you had directional conviction here. So you start to see like these areas, they just have confluence, and they keep they, they continue to be important, and this is one of them. If we get above there, that's telling you something as well. Then I think we're going to at least the high volume node. If we get to the high volume node, then the market is not intermediate bearish anymore. Now it's bullish because this would be an official failed breakdown of this structure, right? So I will, again, this is an area I will trade it away if I get the opportunity or I could just sit in this home for an hour and a half and do nothing. <clears throat> um, all right, some other markets. This is really important. We just got through here. So I do want to show you something from yesterday. Very important. We saw this. We've, I've seen this twice now in crude where, and again, this is where the footprint can come in handy, right? So I saw it. We saw it down here this day. 
nothing but sellers all day long. Like it was, and I'll show you on the footprint here in a second what yesterday looked like, but it was like negative delta. Every five minute period was negative, 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 negative. And it kind of just sat here. And I'm like, okay. And I kept trying to get long and it really didn't do anything. Didn't really lose that day, but it just didn't do anything that day. And then we opened up, gap up. And then that was it, gone. Same exact thing yesterday. In this area here, it was just nothing but sellers all day long. I'll show you that here in a second, and then look what we're doing, right? So now you can see this was when I got on the webinar, we were right here, and this was going to be a, the same, same thing as you see in equities where we could have paused and did this. We're through here. This thing is going, this is going to be really great for gas prices, not, but this, this thing's going to rip, right? We got through here. This is where this directional conviction started. These were balance areas. This is where we tried to break down. Here's we came back, test that volume node, failed. This was a very big area. We just got through there. So now I am looking nothing but long in crude, right? And there were signals here. I had a ton going on. I didn't take this down here, but we even got the, of course, the pullback here. So you can see this was right here. Here's your 177 stop run. This is what we call one of my five setups in my SI indicator course. This is a stop and hold, stop run that holds, right? To hold meaning the big money comes in behind it. It's just not the buying, buying of guys puking. Now the big money comes in and propels it higher, right? And let's see what happened here. Got a little bit below it, but we did not guarantee it wasn't an ATR below it, right? So the ATR is 15, it was right around that. Probably we pulled back there. This never got 15 ticks below there, held, gone. And then you got, here's your ATR, ATR above. This is this is where I talk about, and crude does it number one. December ICE Iceberg sell alert at ES, 734 contracts. I'll come back to this in a second. I just don't want to miss a trade here. Uh, all right, now you got some, just not showing you the quantity. Some sell ice coming in. Not huge, still in this zone. So once again, break of the zone is going to be, and what I will do here, I think I already said this, but so ATR is five, five and a half, five point four five. So if this gets an half ATR above here and these are firing off, I'll go along this. I think I already said that. I know I said it in the NASDAQ, but so meaning we're looking at two, two and three quarter points. We'll just say three points to make it simple, right? So 40, 44 and a half would be a half ATR. So if this comes up, we already know what's in this zone, right? Now we're talking, whoa. Now we're talking probably, you know, three, 4,000 contracts in the zone, mostly buy ice, but now here's some sell ice, right? This launch is out of here. I will go long. If these are firing off, I will go long aggressively out of here. And then we're headed up to that liquidity. And here we go. And you see- S&P December stop, stop by alert at ES, 659 contracts. There's 43. I as well. All right, so we're long. Um, hopefully this doesn't turn into a dumb and dumber setup on a stop run. Of course, I bought right on it. <laughs> All right, so let's let's draw this. I don't take it on the chin on this one. What I should have done, I heard that stop run go off. I should have just waited for us to clear this area and said I just jumped in again because this doesn't mean it's real buying, right? This is this is a stop run, meaning it's most of the time retail traders puking. Just hoping this can hold. Or I'm gonna take it on the chin. It was aggressive. I saw these stocks firing off. That's why I did this. But when another setup's firing off, you probably want to pause for a second, especially when we're in an inflection area like we talked about. All right, so I'm gonna cover half these until we can get out of the zone. There's no reason to take a huge loss here. Because <clears throat> again, this is a new setup. Right, I want to see buying propel this out of here, real buying, not a puke. So I should have just waited again. I'll keep three on, see what happens here. But if this gets above this zone, then it's then it's go time. And I think we're going up to sixty. <clears throat> Gold ice PC, one hundred fifty contracts. Gold's going to zero. Free gold for everybody. 
All right. So let's watch this again. This is, I, I wanted to be I wanted to be long aggressive there, and I did, but then something else fired off. So I'm going to see this clear, and then I'm going to be long. I'm going to add to it. You're going to get another 700 cell ice that was in this zone. So let's see what happens here. So my stop for this is going to go. What I was going to do, I can pretend this didn't happen. I would have gone an ATR below this plus. I usually go plus a point to get out of that range. Now this is a new setup. I could. I'm going to trail my stop to an ATR below the bottom of this zone. So. Again, ATR is five and a half, so we're going to say six. So just make it easy. So six points below here is 35.50 plus four, so 34.50. And that would put me outside of this zone as well. So that's, I like that because I don't like getting stopped out in the middle of zones. You guys have seen webinars where that's happened. So there's my stop for that three lot. If this breaks above here, I will add to it. Stops and go in the same spot. I'd really like to see these stocks participating to get out of this thing. Let's check NASDAQ. So again, NASDAQ never got an ATR below here. ATR is uh, 20, 20 and a half. I never got 20 points below here. It got about eight points below there. Now we're trying to launch. So what did I say? So what did I say? It's if ATR is... 10 and a half, 10 and a quarter points. So meaning this gets, this looks like it's holding. Remember this is 500 by ice. This didn't get an ATR below here. So this is still a Titanic setup. Right? If we get above here. Green stop, stop by CL, 301 conference. That's why I wanted to, I was just showing you guys, I want to buy that. All right, so now I'm getting in this as well. I'm only going to put on a half right now because this is this is I'm risking a lot more here. I'll get into that as well. Like as far as risk reward, like my stop has to go now an ATR below here, right? So I'm talking the size of this zone, which is that's 15 points, and ATR is another 21 points, so that's 36 points plus. I'll go another point to get out of the ATR, so that's 37 points below the zone. I I'm sorry. 27 points below the zone, I have to go. So that's 93 ish. I'll come back to that, and make sure it's accurate. But so again, you gotta you gotta make sure you're not over trading for your account size, right? I, if I'm risking more here, I can't be putting on full size if I have to risk you know 40 points on the trade. But actually, I could I could put on full size. I think let's check it real quick. I can cover this for you guys too. Usually I have this all mapped out. It's just when I'm doing these webinars, I'm jumping from product to product. So you can see here. So the spreadsheet we have in my room, my room. So this is based on my account size, right? So you want to basically what you need to glean from this is two percent of your account. Account size is what you should be risking per trade. That's even high. You maybe one and a half percent. But if you're trading micros and you only have like a thirteen thousand dollar account, you don't even have to change this because this is based on the full size. If you trade micros, it's the same thing. Just thirteen thousand. Then you put on, for instance, so I'm risking forty points, right? So I can have four on or three on, right? If you trade micros, you can have three micros on based on a thirteen thousand dollar account. So trust me, if you if you only have a ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollar account, you need to be trading micros. You're trading too big if you're, if you're not. Hold on a second here. Okay. I'm going to put on one more because I can. I should. And you want to be consistent with this too. You don't want to be one time putting on one, another time three. Base it on your account size. Be like an algo. You know, you're putting on this, you're based on what you have to risk. You're risking 2%. You put on that amount of size, isn't it? And you can't change it because you don't feel like this doesn't feel right, right? Just be consistent. You've got to be consistent with that stuff or you're not going to make it in this game. So that's that for right now. So long both equities. 
Do we have a position on here? Do we get an ATR above there? No. We didn't even get a half ATR above this stop stop zone. All right, so the other market I want to buy is crude. What I just showed you guys. So if this turns into a stop and hold, I will be along this as well. So here's the stop run. You can see it on the chart here. You can see where it started. You can see the spike on the sub chart. 300, 300. This just helps you determine that area much better for me. Your stop run. You want to make sure you incorporate all the prices. We stop price 260 for contracts. Wheat price for sells 155 contracts. Wheat stock price 297 contracts. So wheat, wheat's active. Go there in a second. So again, it's ATR, say 20 points. So I already went over why I want to be along this market. We'll look at market profile here in a second too. If I Good chance. Notable to iceberg sells EW contracts. So ATR is 15, 14.76, so 15 points. Right. So meaning this could be a either a stop and hold or a dumb and dumber. We don't know until it goes an ATR below or an ATR above. This market has the most propensity to retest the zone. So I will let this go a full ATR above, retest fail, then I will get in. I've learned my lesson, Chase, you know, getting in aggressively in this market, right? This is a perfect example of one that did that exact thing, right? Here you go. When we finally did get an ATR above here, I don't think this first one was, this one definitely was. Here's your retest, here's your fail, you get in a half ATR and you're, you're already 40 plus ticks in the money. And then what you can do, based on these setups, say you did get long off of this one. If this fails, then you're out because this would be a temporarily a bearish setup, right? And then you just wait for your next one. You don't want to see this fail. If this if there's, if there's truly buyers in here, this should hold and it should go higher. If it fails, you just get out. If you're trading off a bar chart, you have no idea. You're just sitting there like, well, this, look, nice this looks guys. bullish to me. This looks bullish to me. Like, well, I, I don't understand why, why did this fail? Well, because you have book map real time SI indicator real time I, and you know exactly why it failed. There was a stop run and there was no real buying behind it. That's why it failed. That's pretty important information to know where you're not just sitting there holding the bag as this thing sells back off, comes all the way back, and you're like, well, what happened? Well, you know what happened. There's 300 buy stops. Is there any is there any big money willing to hold this and push it higher, or is it just the dumb money that puked and is going to turn around and sell off, right? say every webinar if you do not have you're not using real-time volume in your trading you just don't have all the information period whoops no, I do that. No. all right so i'm hoping this thing can hold this nice zone now this is again i wouldn't even have been in this yet because of this setup Remember, that's why I covered half of them, but I'm willing to give this a shot to get higher. Because again, I was playing off of this ice zone and then this came in and this could be a dumb and dumber. The exact same thing I'm showing you in crude, that's what this could turn out to be, right? So I wanna see this get above here and then I will add to this position. <clears throat> NASDAQ, of course, by the exact high tick. I'm fine with it, that was the aggressive entry. Again, this is still never got an ATR above here retest fail, right? That's what you can wait for if you want to be more conservative with the entries. It just seems like every time I do these webinars, when I enter aggressively, it's immediately in my face. But that's what it is. All right, any questions, Bruce? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, a few questions on, uh, well, your settings, I guess, maybe on the ES, like, um, you know why and maybe explain like why you're looking at spikes i guess instead of um uh as you know i, I like to look at the summation but uh um maybe uh you can cover that and then also uh, uh james has a question on atr um if you can explain the atr projection and setup 
So one second, let me, uh, <clears throat> so this in wheat is, you can see here, monster stop runs over 500 in the waiting hands of cell ice. That's a double whammy, we call it, right? So majority of the time, it, this is like a stopping point, right? Because again, it's not real buying, it's a puke, and it, the, the big money is basically absorbing the puke and saying we think this thing's going down, right? So this is all in a vacuum. We got to look at the structure and everything to determine, you know, if we want to short this thing. But it's actually I use the dark dark blue for double one or for uh, double whammy. So let's get that drawn. All right, so if that zone fails in that Nasdaq, I'll I, I will flip and go short. Right again, this is a really important area. I'm giving it a shot. If it fails, I'm going short, and I think we got to uh, we can move down 100 points down the other way. So we talked about why why that was an important area. So you can see here, huge stop run, 626 into the sell icebergs. And there's a little buy icebergs, but this is this is a really important area. Actually, I can make this a little bigger. Of course, they're starting to sell equities. I can signal in and we stop that market. Markets. All right, so we'll keep an eye on this because I'm definitely want to check that's some huge size. You're going to get a big move out of here either way. So let's just quickly look where we're at on the uh, big picture. This is this is iffy, right? So this is a fail breakdown. Got to the high volume node, but now where are we? High volume node of where this broke down from. So this is obviously bigger as well, and you can actually just do one of these, make this one big one, right? It broke down, we tested the bottom. Remember we talked about the areas that, so this was still bearish, right? Even though it came back, we tested the bottom of this, failed. It could still be bearish, here's that zone which is the high volume out of this it could still do that and still be bearish right so i will still lean even though we're out of that zone if this zone fails i will still go short this market if we get above here this is where i want to be long above 70 30. so i'm not going to go long that setup but i will go short because if we get above this zone i will go long i'll look for longs hopefully that makes sense <clears throat> so let's see if this fails i will short that Let's see the beating I'm taking here. I'm going to make a rule for now on these webinars. I'm only going to enter enter positions conservatively. I'm not going to be aggressive anymore. Every time I'm aggressive, it's like that's the high tech. This one, at least, I refrain because again, you saw this this dumb and dumber. This is now looking like it's a dumb and dumber. Let's see, Let's see the ATR is. Then I'll cover the ATR question. ATR is still five, so do we get five cents or five points below here? Sure did. We only got about three. Right. So this still could be a stop and hold. If this gets five points below here, then it's an officially a dumb and dumber setup, meaning stop run, no follow through, the dumb money puke, failure. Right. So we still don't know what that is. <coughs> Yeah, there's a few questions about ATR in here, and I, um, I mean, basically, correct me if I'm wrong. I just to um, try to paraphrase here. I mean, you're using this as understanding the market structure and the market behavior, uh, and then you're using ATR to manage your trades. Right. It's just a dynamic way. So before I used to use, you know, when I first came up with these setups, I used to use just a, a set number for these products that I, from watching it over and over and over, the standard which is still good 80% of the time is 10 ticks in crude, right? So determine the setup. So as long as it doesn't move 10 ticks below the zone, so say, say this moved 10 ticks below the zone, which it did, this would be officially a dumb and dumber, right? Or if it moved 10, it doesn't move 10 ticks below and then moves higher, that's a stop and hold, right? So I would use 10 ticks for, for gold and crude. I'd use 10 points for NASDAQ. I'd use three points for ES as a standard. But the more I got into it, the more I started to be a little more dynamic, which makes sense. Where I'm now I'm just using I'm using what the volatility is for that day, right? So it does, that makes more sense. Where 
if the market's more volatile, I want to be using what on a five minute chart, I want to be using what that ATR is. So instead of 10 ticks, we're looking at 15, right? 14.5, I round up. So 15 ticks instead of 10, because it's just incorporating the volatility of the day. So 95% of the time I use the ATR of the five minute chart. 5% of the time I will use 20% of the hourly. So you can see 20% of this hourly is round up to 60. So 12, 12 ticks versus 15. When do I use this? Like after a number, right? Where it's just like a one-time event where the number comes out as a big spike. That's Ember Iceberg cell NQ, 151 contracts. All right, let me little sell off into my positions. Let's see what's going on there. Um, but if it's a one-time event, I'll use 20% of the uh, of the uh, ATR for the hourly. Other than that, I'm always using the, the five minutes. So hopefully that makes sense. And it's just a more dynamic way to incorporate the, the volatility of the day. That's all it is. Okay, yeah, I mean, we're pretty much all caught up on, on questions. Okay. All right, so again, if I get stopped out of this NASDAQ, I will be looking to go short, especially, so say for instance, this does this, stops me out, we get an ATR below here, which this is an ATR below here, it comes back, it retests, it fails, I will go short this, this setup, All right? I can't, I mean, this is probably like the eighth time this has happened where I've bought aggressively instead of just waiting for the retest failure where it's literally been high tech and going. So it is what it is. I'll stop out of this. And I'll look for a retest failure. That NQ ice, December iceberg, sell NQ. 100. Oh, yeah, I'm going to set up here too. 150 is, that's my threshold. Um, and this was 150. Most days it's a little higher. Today, 150 looks like it's adequate. Let's watch me now get stopped out to the tick here and then move all the way back up. Come on, you can do it. Let me draw this zone here real quick. So like I told you guys, that that was an inflection area. So I should have just been conservative on that entry because again, I, I just got done saying for an hour that we could trade either way out of that zone, right? So when, when you find an area where it could go either way, you shouldn't be aggressive. You should be conservative. I'm talking to myself. You know, but I'm trying to put on trades here for you guys, and you know that's not my excuse. It's still, you know, I still should have been conservative, but it's a perfect example. So the, the idea of these webinars are for learning, learning for you guys, right? So that is a great learning experience. When you look at a market and you say this can go either way here, you certainly don't want to be aggressive. All I had to do is wait for this thing to get an ATR above this huge buy ice, retest fail. Like, why am I being aggressive when I just said this area could go either way? Right. So that's a good lesson for you guys. Like, hey, you know, I want to wait. If you're using these setups, I want to wait for a retest failure, then I'll get on the trade. There's my stop. That should be it. So now though, I what I will do, I mean, this is a new setup as well. I mean, am I imagining that? Like seriously, it's every time you, you guys should see in the room. I sit here and it, it's, it happens five day five times a day. It's, it's amazing. Look at that. <laughs> All I can do is laugh at this point. Anyway, if this comes back now to this zone, I can actually even see, but the thing is this hasn't got an ATR below, below this zone. So I'm looking right now. So let's say if this comes back, I wouldn't short off of this zone because we have not got an ATR below there, retest fail. I will short off of this zone, retest fail. So let's watch here and see if that happens. But I believe I called, I would be stopped out to the exact tick. Did I not, Bruce? How many times have you seen it just on these webinars? Look at that. So I'm, I just oh, want, nice I just want to get confirmation that I called it. Uh, yeah, yeah, you you did. <laughs> I mean, I I did see it though. Like you know, when you had your stop there and it didn't it didn't uh, trigger. True. But and it actually traded at that exact price level. Um, but uh, I just I, I, I just you know I I I, I hear you. I just try to be realistic. It's the same here in New York City when the subway trains come and, and leave. Oh, I always miss the train. <laughs> you know, it's not true. It's not like, so there's lots of times like it just arrives when I'm walking down the steps, you yeah. know. 
Well, it just shows I'm just like every other trader too, right? Doesn't every trader yeah. think that stop stop hunting is it's personal, right? Yeah. But yeah, yeah, exactly. the reason I I stress it is because I, I'm proving it. Like, <laughs> come in my room and watch. It gets hysterical. It's, it happens five times a day. Like, look at this. I'm, I'm not imagining that. <laughs> but at least you guys get some entertainment out of here. So now I will short this. If this kind of, I want to see again. This isn't an official. We didn't get an ATR below here, so I'm not going to short this zone here that just fired off. I want to see a retest of this zone failure, and then I'll get in, even though it'll be in the middle of this most recent one. I'll still short it. You got 500 buy ice that's underwater. Maybe uh, talk about your entry there on the short. Um, well, I haven't entered it yet. No, no. I mean, if you, if what are you looking for? Right. So again, this was a, this is now what you call broken ice, right? This is one of the five setups. So this was. We were on here when I said this is huge. What are we on here? Why can't I find this that spike? It wasn't this. This is the one issue here. I can never like this stuff blends in. This was a 500. Oh, here it is. Okay. So this zone was off of this. This is 600 buy ice, right? Meaning paper had hidden 600 buy ice. And, this, and again, this is a better example. Paper's not always right. What's important is the area is important. Strata works. The area is important, right? Yes, paper is the big money and they usually get their way, but when they're wrong, they got to puke like the rest of us, right? So that's what these setups are based off of. And this is all based on my experience as a large scalper. Right. So I, when I was a big trader, I know how to react to trades when they would go against me. And when we would come back, I'd be praying for it to get back to my area that I got in so I can just scratch the trade. And I used to watch other big traders back then. You can see counterparty. I can see exactly how other traders used to trade. So the, all my setups are based, they're not hypothetical. They're based on how big traders react when they're wrong, when they're right, when, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that's what these are based off of. So what I'm doing here now. This is an officially a broken ice setup, right? It's not very high tech. It's iceberg that's broken, meaning they were wrong. This got an ATR below here, as you saw my exact to the tick stop out. Now I'm looking for a retest of this zone, which I should have waited when I went long, when I went long here, I should have waited for an ATR retest here that I'm complaining about. But now I'm gonna wait for this, 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 and then I will short this off of this, these guys that were wrong, this zone, 600 buy ice. So I'm just praying it can get back up into the zone so I can short it. <clears throat> see if I got stopped out of ES. No, still hanging tough in ES. <clears throat> All right, so I'm just hoping it can get up to this zone. You know, for some reason, if it doesn't get up here, <clears throat> and then this zone, it's a little confusing. Let me just let me get rid of this right now. Even though we did bounce off this, let me just make this a different color so people aren't confused. This was cell ice as well earlier. So <clears throat> say for instance, we don't get up to this zone. I'm, I'm hoping we get up to this zone so I can short it, right? So what I, what I need to see now, here's your ATR, here's the zone. Here's the ATR below. I want to see it retest, fail, I'll get an half ATR. If we don't get up to this zone, I will play off of this zone. Meaning I need to see an ATR below, a retest, failure, half ATR, I'm in. Stop goes, an ATR plus four, you know, a point or two to get out of the ATR zone above this zone, this zone. So again, I did not do, I was aggressive on this entry of NASDAQ when I should have, especially in an inflection area that I just said, I should have waited for a full ATR, which was 20 plus points, re retest, failure, then I get in. Instead, I got in aggressively and I took it on the chin. So I basically bought the high tick and I sold the low tick, which is, which is awesome. Minus the awesome part. 
So now I'm watching here. I either want to see retest this zone, or if this breaks, then I'm going to short on this one. Uh, let's check out weed here. <clears throat> so weed's just basically still sitting in this zone. Gold. We didn't really cover this as far as this. There's a lot of stuff earlier that fired off. But the thesis was short, right? Where's gold? There we go. So this is basically the last stand for gold. I already, I, I still wouldn't buy here. What we talked about earlier in that such a fail breakout by selling tail, retest the high volume node, failure. We got through. This was basically the convoluted balance area, but still was test, test, test. This is a balance area. This is a high volume node. Did we stop at that high volume node like we stopped at this high volume node? No, we went right through it. So this thing may screw around here for a little bit, but I think we're going much lower now, right? This was buying tail, buying tail, buying tail, directional conviction. This is an important zone, but this has failed. So I, I don't I wouldn't go long off of this because we failed the structure. Now I'm looking for short. If this gets through this zone, you're going to get a monster move, in my opinion. So that noise is basically gold getting hammered here. So again, if we get through this zone, I'm going to short this. I mean, you could have shorted it up here. There were signals. There was just so much going on this morning. I didn't get a, even get a chance to put it on, but I will definitely short this. If this breaks the zone, we're coming down to here. MQ ice, SM for iceberg, sell NQ, 154 contracts. Right, of course, never retested that buy ice zone yet. Yeah, still could do it. And Hallelujah. I didn't get stopped up to the tick. I did for the second there to torture me, but it got lower, so now I'm okay with that. I don't have to complain about that for the rest of the day. And here comes the nice iceberg cell CL 156 contracts. Check that in a second. Let me let me just get this zone out of here since there's new stuff firing off. So here's some more cell ice. So this is exactly what I said, guys. Like this was an inflection area. So now I will go short on retest of any of these zones. Too bad I had to take it on the chin, being aggressive, but that's what it is. So what I'm going to do here, because this is more cell ice, I'm just going to make this one big zone, right? Because this is another setup. So what I'm going to do here is just, I'm going to do this. Where's all the buyers at? I thought, I thought this was euphoria. This is a good lesson too for you guys as in girls, if I can get over there. These markets are still intermediate term bearish, just like we talked about. This needs to be, it needs to cover through that high value know, for this to turn bullish. All this is doing is returning from where we broke down. This is where we gapped down. This is where we're struggling. This thing can turn around, like I said, and pull back all the way to this. And if it, and guess what? If it gets through this, that's a fail break out of that, and then we're coming down here. So this is getting interesting now. <clears throat> all right. Well, what I wanted to do here is make this one big zone. So I'm going to remove this. SP December Ice Iceberg by Alert at ES. 700 to contracts. All right, so what am I looking for now? Obviously, I, I didn't get a retest of that one zone I wanted to short at. But do we get an ATR? ATR is 21. Do we get 21 points below this double ice zone, double cell ice zone, the black? 82, quarter-ish. Do we get down to 62? No, that was, that was only 16 points. So we officially did not get an ATR below here. So I'm, this is not an official... ATR retest fail. That's what I will get short, but I need to see an ATR below here. 
I'm definitely going to be conservative on the south side, as we all know, with the habitual bungee jumps that these equities do. <clears throat> so keep an eye on gold. If that breaks a little lower, that's going to be a free fall. Stopped out of my ES. I mean, at least I covered half of those. Again, this was the setup, right? This was the most recent setup. You had a dumb and dumber that failed. Now we're through this ice too. These things can go be going all the way back down. Yes, I have dual buy ice here. So this is still in this zone basically. So I'm just going to keep this zone. Just know this zone is current. Right, this was bias from earlier, and now you had more bias in here. So if, what I want to see now is I want to if this break, I want to see this break, and I want to see it to get into here below there, retest failed, then I'm going to go short off of this. One, because this was prior to this just came in as well, so this is a big area. I still, I mean, this liquidity is still above, so this could hold and move higher. You I could go long here too. If this holds. Go ahead. Hold on a second here. This is confusing me now. I don't know why that other line was there. Might have drawn that inadvertently. All right, so I'll stay on a little longer, see if these zones break. <clears throat> Any questions, Bruce? Uh, we always get, you know, questions, and um, and uh, I haven't asked them here. Um, uh, we always get questions about uh, your threshold settings, et cetera, uh, and um, uh, you know, we we just over the several. <laughs> Uh, webinars and basically over a year or, or two now um, don't answer these because it's it just takes too long uh, and um, uh, and this is all a part of your course too these are pro your proprietary threshold levels so I, right. I don't mean to disappoint anybody here but uh, uh, yeah if you are like the way that Scott trades I mean his thresholds are the way that he studied the market and what he came up with so you might want to reach out to Scott uh, uh, directly for that you've got his email uh, and uh, information I put it into the chat and I'll put it in here again hold on I think right, I or you know, my trade room they get those thresholds you know we don't you know, it's not like I cover everything every day but you know you're in there long enough the, the best way is just get the course learn the setups learn the thresholds instead of trying to like you know piecemeal here and there I even tell guys in the room, it's like, yeah, you're going to learn all the setups and the thresholds eventually, but do you want it to take six months? Like, if you want to fast track it, just get the course. It's like anything else in life, right? Learn what you're doing. But if you join the trade room and you're in there, you're going to see me using them. And we talk about thresholds and stuff all the time. There's guys in there that have the course and they'll share that stuff too. But yeah, it's just, just get the course. Do you, do you have, do you have anything? I, I, I'm not sure. I just, uh, I can't recall if you get the course. Uh, do you get like a, a month in the in the room for free or anything like that, or they're sold separately? Uh, I do have discounts. So if you get the course, you get a discount to my trade room. I think it what I is it twenty percent off the trade room. Or if you join the course, I mean join the trade room, then you get depending on the the, the term of the trade room. And so I do monthly, quarterly, yearly. I think it's ten percent, fifteen percent, twenty five percent, something like that. So I, it's either way. So if you join the trade room, you get a discount on the course. If you buy the courses, you get a discount on the trade room. Just go to my website and you can see all that I don't know off the top of my head what the exact percentages are. Yeah, I pasted all the information in the in the chat there for, for everybody. All right, so ATR and crew is 14 ticks. It's got 17 ticks below here. So this was an official dumb and dumber. I don't want to short this market. So like, again, I, this is, this is a perfect example, not trading these setups in the vacuum, right? So like, even though it's turned into dumb and dumber, this did retest and fail. Like, I don't want to go short based on everything I just showed you guys, right? So then I'll just say, okay, well, if this turns out to, to sell off, 
ends up selling off, then that's fine. I don't want to, I want to just look for long setups, right? So depending on what this does here, I think this is just getting started. I mean, if you look at the, which is not going to be good for us driving gas prices, but you look at this, let's go to the daily here. I mean, this is, this is the next big area. I need to draw this zone in here. Why is this important area? Well, this is what started this entire down move. This is a very, very important area and that's not too far from here. So let's draw this zone real quick. Again, I have a course coming out here shortly soon, one of these days, on drawing these zones in the important area because they're very, very, uh, you can see, like we just saw in equities, how important those zones were, right? Where you want to be careful, even though I wasn't. That's that, and then you want to get this here. These are both directional conviction zones, right? Directional conviction is very, very, very important. What's directional condition? That, that, that. So gaps are directional conviction as well, right? But where, where the directional conviction starts is very, very important. So I would love for this to pull back and get a long setup in here and then trade it into this zone and look to cover in this zone. Um, if I get a side indicator opposite signal, like a bearish signal, if not, you know, if this rips through here, then this is the next step up. I still think this is where we're going up here, but very important zones. So I will take a long here. I would really like to see this pull back and get a long signal down here, get some bias or something, and then maybe we can easily make it to 74 today. So the liquidity up here that just got put in there. So it's not that important in my, my opinion. All right, let's, let's see what's happening. So again, we never got an ATR below here. So even if it just does this and comes back out, I'm not going to short this. I need to see an ATR. Will I consider, and then this is most likely going to happen, will I consider a short on a retest of this? Yes, I will. That's what I was waiting for here. It didn't happen. It still could happen. Yes, you are in the face of this a little bit, but it, it still would not be an ATR above this, this most current sell ice, right? Meaning you got to be careful. So say this was down here, this black zone, which was sell ice, and then you have this one up here. Well, if this fails, that's broken ice, right? That's a bullish setup. And then you're going to short right in, you're going to short right into the failure of that. That That's where it gets tricky. If they're just, And then that's when you can actually play for one of those back and forth. We saw that yesterday yes, in my room. But this is close enough to this. So we're, this would not actually be failing on a retest of this broken ice where there was 500, 600 buy ice in here. I could short this and I'm not, it's not violating this at all, right? We didn't, that's not an ATR above this to, to make this broken ice. So we could go here, here, and then there. And that's what I think is going to happen. So we'll see. <clears throat> but you want to watch this. This could just easily, easily go right through here. Would I go along this zone if this just rips right through here? No, but if it rip, not based on this, but I would go long if I got an ATR above this, right? Dropping 21 points, retested this zone, and then started to move up based on this. See how that works? Hopefully that's not confusing. But this zone's done as far as a bullish setup. It moved an ATR below here. This, we still don't know what it is. Is this a Titanic setup to the sell side or is this gonna be broken ice to the upside? Right? I will go long if this happens. And I will go short if this happens. I know it may sound confusing. I mean, guys, trading isn't just black and white every day. Most times, most days, these setups are just, you know, spot on. They're not confusing. They're not on top of each other. Some days they are, and that's trading, right? I can still, you can still glean some information on this, and you're not making a haphazard choice. I know it sounds confusing. It's like, well, wait, I'll go short here. I'll go short here. Yeah, I'm basing it on this stuff. And how if it gets an ATR above or below here is going to determine how I want to trade it. So again, the mistake I made being aggressive on this one is I never let it get an ATR above to retest to fail, which I should have for the fifth time because I was just saying how this is an important area where it could trade either way. So that was a trading error on my part and I make them all the time. I'm 
you know, I don't make them as much as I used to. You think after 23 years in the business, you wouldn't make them at all, but it's just human nature. I still make them, especially when I'm on these webinars. I want to, you know, show you guys and trade these zones, like I said, but it is what it is. I probably still would have taken that trade on my own. So. Anything else, Bruce, question-wise? Uh, let's see here. Okay, so um, no, David, uh, when the 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 stop and iceberg um, uh, is detected and is read aloud by Bookmap, um, uh, yeah, I mean his threshold is a certain number, but it's just reading out the raw data uh, of what actually did transact in terms of stops and icebergs. So that's that, and then uh, can we see market share in Bookmap? I, I'm not sure what you mean, Mark. Um, no, that's it. That's it, Scott. I think that uh, that's everything. Okay. Um, so you know, going forward, I'm looking for this zone to break. This is massive, massive side of wheat. And you know, those of you out there saying I don't trade wheat, I don't trade grains you're doing yourself a disservice not looking at multiple markets. What you should be doing is coming up with playbooks, exact setups, right? And then looking for real-time volume. And it doesn't matter what market you're trading, it's all the same stuff. It's all based on structure, how the markets react to balance areas, directional conviction, those areas that we've been talking about this entire webinar, and real-time volume. It doesn't matter what futures market you're trading. If you're not, if you're just staring at one, you're doing yourself an incredible disservice. If you're only looking at a couple, you know, you need to have you know, some, I understand some people don't have the bandwidth to be looking at five, 10 markets at a time, and that's fine. But you should be looking at least three to five, and you're just looking for distinct setups and then looking for your volume to confirm it, and then you trade it. So don't discount, you know, this wheat because you don't look at wheat. You're going to be amazed at how many times, like, this is huge size, and whatever way this breaks is probably going to be the – again, I don't want to go long on this based on what I just showed you, but I, you know, because I, I use my thesis. My thesis is still short this market. If this breaks, this is going to be a huge move lower. This is huge size that is invested in this area. And that's what you need to know. And if you're just trading off bar charts, you don't know any of that. You're like, what? Okay, what's going on here? I don't know what to do, right? So again, the reason I don't want to go long yet, this market, and again, we can make this one big one. This is just at the high volume of this, where we broke down from. I, I want to see this get above this. And then preferably above that, and then I'll look for longs. Until then, this is just a retest of the high value nodes of this one and the bigger one. So that's why I want to be short. So watching that for a short, um, I'm going to go long crude and then the next long signal I get here, hopefully it pulls back and somewhere down here, but if it's a little higher, I'll still go long. Watch that zone above that I just showed you guys. <clears throat> For a potential stop, it doesn't mean it's going to stop there for sure, right? That's when you use your. So say we come up here and you get to see some stop and holds, or you see some buy ice, or you just see blue bubbles right through this thing. That don't get out. If you see it struggling, or you get a better setup, then you get out, right? But just know this is an important area because that's where that stopped, and that's right around 74. So that's what I'll look if I go along there. I'll look for there. Gold is about to be free gold for everybody. This is in a crucial area here. You can see, again, tail, 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 directional conviction. We're trying to put another tail in. I think we're going to probably balance here, and then I'm looking for that because, again, we this is showing its hand. It got through this. Now it's probably going to build balance. Again, trending markets do this. They trend, and then they build balance, and they trend, and they build balance, trend, build balance. That's what I think is going to happen here. That's my thesis. If something changes and this thing rips back up through important areas up here, then I'll change my mind. Right? That's, how, that's what trading is. You come up with your thesis, you look for the volume to confirm it, you trade that way. If something changes, you got to change your, your stance. Right now, I'm looking for that to happen and at least move down to here. So watch that today. And then equities, again, very important areas. And there's a reason it's choppy right here because, like I said, what's going to happen? Are we going to get to this high volume node and, and maybe through it, or is this going to pause? where this broke down the first time. So far, it's looking, that's ES, same thing with NASDAQ. So far, it's looking like, you know, 
we saw a 600 buy ice and that couldn't hold it. That couldn't hold. Like, what if this thing was truly bullish? Why would that not hold? And why would that not be retesting this high volume node right now? That tells you something. So, again, I will short those areas that we just talked about for a move back down to this balance area here. If we get through there, you want to watch the high volume node of this one. If we get through that one, then we're making new lows from the last week, in my opinion. All right, one last look at the volume here, and then I'm going to hop off. <clears throat> so, once again, if this retests this zone, this broken ice, 600 icebergs, and fails half ATR, I will get in. Yes, it will be in this middle of the zone, but I'll give it a shot. Say this never gets back up here again, and then we get full ATR below, and we come down and get a full TR below this, I'll look for a retest, failure, half ATR, I'm in there short if this recovers this again this is already done as a bullish setup because we've, we've we've violated that this still could be a bullish setup meaning broken ice sell ice took a stand if we do this full atr this way retest this i will go along this way right depending on what happens on this most recent zone that's the most recent stuff that fired off all in this area this is done as far as but i'll still short that as a bearish setup but as far as a bullish setup this is done but this is not done as a potential bullish setup. I hope that's making sense, right? We just don't know what this is yet because it's still in here. We had sell ice take a stand here. We already know buy ice was wrong. So I would prefer for this just to break to play to the downside because I already know what happened here. Buy ice couldn't hold this thing up. So I'd much rather short this, but if this does this, this, then I'll, then I'll go along. I'll give it another shot. That's about it. See this. It should be to the tick, right? Yeah, there you go. There you go. About the time today. Um so all we really did here, so we did have this. Dumb and dumber, and we did pull back. Remember, I got long, at least I covered half of them. I just took a small loss. But all we did here is we retested this zone. So you did get an ATR retest failure. I should be long this zone actually right here. I should have I should have gotten long again, is what I'm saying. So ATR is 4.71. So five points. So all this was. Yes, this failed, but then we moved into this. Two and a half points out of here, half of the ATR. I should have been long at it right around 39.50. I missed that one. You could go long here. You're just, you know, you're costing yourself three or four points. Or all you do now is wait for another setup. This held, wait for your next buy ice or whatever, or stop and hold, and then you go long, which I will do. I missed this one. That's it. All right, Bruce, any other questions? If not, I'm gonna hop off and uh, no, sir. I think uh, I think that's it. Um, and uh, lots of lots of questions in here. Uh, and uh, yeah, lots of uh, lots of stuff here in the uh, in the order flow. Um, uh, thank you very much, Scott. I mean, uh, again, like uh, as you guys can see, this is uh, Scott does this uh, every Thursday. And uh, this is an hour and 40 minutes uh, of, uh, you know, real real time uh, analysis and, and trading. Uh, so um, anyway, uh, you've got uh, contact information for Scott if you're interested in more of uh, his education or mentorship. Uh, and um, uh, you can come to the webinars uh, when you subscribe to Bookmap Global Plus as well. Uh, let's see, Carl's asking, uh, can you got IQF DTN Offering. Oh, okay. Uh, really? Okay. Um, well, let, let me know how it goes, Carl. Uh, so this is new news. I guess IQ Feed is offering uh, market by order data. Um, Who is? Yeah. D uh, yeah. DTN IQ. Uh, so far, it's crap. Okay. <laughs> it's <laughs> you know it, it's a really it's a very challenging thing to do. I mean, uh, uh, so um, otherwise they would have done it uh, much earlier. I mean, from day one, uh, rhythmic. Um, had it. They are, were already set up for it, and as soon as it came out from the CME, 
Rhythmic already had it. It was ready to go. It was already in the works. It took years uh, for others to start to even develop indicators uh, to understand uh, the MBO data. Uh, so uh, yeah, we came in uh, uh, like three years later. Um, and uh, anyway, um, yeah, go with Rhythmic, uh, Carl. Uh, sounds like it's the not the only choice now, but the only like viable choice, it seems like. So um, no, other than that, Scott, um, you know, great stuff. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and we will uh, we'll do it again on next Thursday. All right, great. Um, you know, obviously trades weren't great, made some aggressive wrong decisions, but that's good learning experience for you guys, right? I mean, important areas, you want to be more conservative, you don't want to be aggressive, right? So and this is a very important area. Quickly before we go, you can see NASDAQ is failing to stay in this composite. We never got to the top here and now we're breaking back down out of it. That could be a move back to this stuff here that I was just showing in the bar chart. So pay attention to that. Yes, for right now, because I just forgot to come look at this stuff again at the end of the close. Like it's trying to hold in here. Right. So the tendency is to go to the other side. There's that 4460. This gets back out. Watch out. Yeah, I mean, another thing, Scott, I mean, I, I have to reiterate this, like, um, you know, Scott went from scalping at the highest level um, possible. I, I can't even imagine what it must have been like um, scalping manually uh, thousands of contracts uh, to this is much, much higher time frame here. So he's positioning himself um, here for a much higher time frame move, as you guys can see. It's very, very different. Um, so uh, just need to reiterate, um, uh, you know, his, his approach now uh, to trading. And you can do this with Bookmap. Uh, you know, it's uh, you, you can set yourself up for it. And then once Scott gets involved in some of these uh, higher time frame trades, he's layering into it. Uh, several, several. Um, you know, he's looking for pullbacks, adding more. It's a new setup. He's moving his stop down, adding more on a new setup, moving his stop down. Um, so um, uh, anyway, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome to uh, to see. And then uh, you know, the overall trading results. Uh, you have these small losses, and you have these massive winners. Right, that's the whole idea, right? Trading is is a percentage game, a statistic odds game, right? So you you put on trades and. No one, no one in the, on the planet is 100%. No one, most people aren't even, you know, 70, 60, 70%. You could be a 50% or less trader. If you're risking one, hypothetically one to make five, one to make four, you're going to be a profitable trader, right? And so the trades I take, I'm looking for that bigger move. It doesn't mean I always get it. So it could turn into a, a potential scalp based on, you know, if a new setup occurs, then I'm out of the trade. But my, my intentions when I put it on the trade, this has got the opportunity for a massive move, right? It's kind of like this goal right here, right? So it's like if this breaks below here, this has an opportunity for a huge move. This is 200 ticks, right? So if I put on a trade here, if I get a short setup, I'm only risking maybe 20, 30 ticks to make 200. That's almost seven to one on my money, right? So that's how I trade. So exactly. I'll take small loss, small loss, small loss, right? And then when I hit it, it's, you know, when, when the market moves in my way, then I'm making four or five, then it takes me. So if I catch one winner at five to one, I can lose four other times and still be profitable. Get it? That's that's how you want to be trading, in my opinion. Well, go, go, go back to that ca candlestick chart for just a second, Scott, because I, I just like, <laughs> you know, uh, setting expectations uh, for, you know, bigger moves is, I just think really a, a kind of critical. Let's say, let's say it does break here, um, you know, how are you looking for this to break? How many hours do you think it's going to take before it hits down into your lower levels there? I mean, with gold, it can happen in five minutes. Right? <laughs> That's not the answer I was looking for, but. Uh... No, but it could, um, it could, it could take hours, right? It could, right? But the thing is, you know, if you're in it overnight, then that's when it gets tricky. And that's when I usually take yeah. losses because I can't watch what's going on. But like, look at the, look at this move here. This was, this was on a Sunday night. I mean, look at this. This was like, you know, this was all basically, this is overnight. And then we opened up and traded, did nothing during the day. And then just, I mean, actually, this was the Sunday night trade. This was the Friday trade, I think. But yes, they could and that, but yeah, it could take and hours. That, it could take and minutes. And that, that there, though, is like probably five, six or seven hours at least. Right. Right. Maybe more. Oh, yes. That's an so hour chart. It is the One, overnight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it's like eight hours, even on right. that big move. 
Right. Right. But then so, you manage your trades, like you said, like as a setup comes in, then I can add to the trade and then trail my stop. Or if it's an opposing setup, then I get out and then I wait for my next opportunity. Right. And, but I still keep the same thesis. I'm just out of the trade right then because the real time volume is telling me this isn't ready to, to, to go yet. Right. And then I just wait. I get out and I wait. If no real time setup comes in, you know, against me, then I'm, I stay in the trade. Right. Right. I mean, I'll piece out at certain areas, important areas like, you know, market profile and stuff that we've been talking about, but I'll always keep a core position on until I see an opposing setup on the book map as I indicator setups. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, makes sense. All right. So keep an eye on these. Again, if this NASDAQ gets going, I want to see this get an ATR below here, retest fail, I will be going short. It will be glorious. <laughs> Is that a movie quote as well or not? No, that's just, that's my quote. <laughs> I think old, old school has, it'll be glorious. Oh, it's glorious. No, yeah. That was, Maybe uh, that was I see Wolf blue. Girl. I, I saw, blue. I saw, I see blue. <laughs> it's it glorious. glorious. <laughs> nice work, Bruce. Yeah, I've been lacking on the movie quotes today. That's what, that's what happens when you get your head ripped off of Nasdaq. You're not so jovial. <laughs> All right, guys. I will uh I'll be back next Thursday. And from now on, I'm not being aggressive on my entries. I'm sick of doing that. Again, I feel a little pressure to put on the trade. Not pressure, but I want I want I want to show you guys the trades instead of just talking all the time. But from now on, I'm being conservative with my entries, and that's gonna help you guys anyway. So that's probably the best way to trade these setups is the conservative route anyway. So <clears throat> so I will see you uh next Thursday. All right. Excellent. Thank you very much, Scott. Thanks. Okay. See you. Bye bye. Yeah.